very warm welcome to episode 42 of my Doll's House Diary. Now I really am just carrying on from episode 41. I've just finished editing it and now I'm carrying on from where we left off. So the door and the little table are still drying in my craft room. But I just want to come in now to the top landing and I'm going to just tidy up the um, flooring in there where I've got lots of little bits of paint. And I'm just using my soft brush to get rid of those. And then I just want to give that back skirting board another coat of paint as I've splashed some wood dye onto it. So I'm getting rid of all of the dust. Okay, so let me go and get my natural calico and I'll do that second coat on there. So the little um, light that I normally use, the batteries have just gone. So I know it's a little bit dark in here, so apologies for that, but I'll try and lighten it up in editing. But I really am just doing another coat along that back skirting. And that's looking a little bit cleaner in there now. So I'll leave that to dry and that will be dry by the time I come to fit the door. Okay, so let's head back into the craft room. Okay, so I'm just gonna give the door and frame a gentle sand. The second coat has now completely dried. And for that, I just use a 500 grade sandpaper. And I've already had a dry fit and the door is now just slightly too big for the frame. And that will happen when you've added some paint, added a couple of coats of paint, because obviously the paint will add to the thickness of the door. I'm going to try and fit this into the frame to find out where I actually need to sand. So I think it's fine widthways, it's just a little bit tight at the top and bottom. So I'm just going to sand along the top and bottom just on my desk like that so that I'm getting a nice flat top and bottom. I'm just going along in the one direction and I'll just do three sweeps at each side and then try again and I know that my taller panels are always at the top so I know I'm putting it in the right way around and I've just done a T on the top of my frame so I know which is the top and this should actually go in and fall to the bottom because my holes are there are there at the back of the door there so I've got it so that it should go in and flat. So I just need to do a little bit more sanding and it's always best just to do a little bit at a time and then try again. And I'm just doing it from the top and bottom just to keep it even. And that time it feels as though I need to take a little bit off the side of the door as well. So let's do that. There, so that's in now. And I did sort of pop that in quite tightly at the bottom, but I'd rather it be tight than there be too much gap in around the outside edge. So now I know that that fits, I can fit my door handle and then I can actually pin hinge the door and fit it into the doll's house. But it's quite late now, so I've got to go and start dinner. So I'm going to call it a day and I'll see you again in the morning. So have a lovely evening and I'll see you soon. <laughs>
morning. I was going to do this bit in the mirror but then I realised that all the writing would be the wrong way around. So I just wanted to show you my t-shirt and mug and I hope that you like them. And to let you know that I can now actually supply these. So I can do I heart my doll's house or I heart my doll house or any other sort of connotation that you would like of that on either the mug or the t-shirt. Now I can't sell these through Etsy because Etsy has to be a completed product product and nothing that's available to order and obviously the, these would be custom order only. So if you're interested then just drop me an email to the little bits and pieces email address and that's in the description box below and I can let you have prices and delivery prices etc. Okay so let's get started. Okay so I want to start by attaching the handle to my door and Luckily I actually checked my book, so I've got all of my measurements in my book here, which I come back to each time I make a door, which is a really good idea if you're not making them all in one go. Keep all of your measurements. And I had in my mind that the handle should be 85mm up, and it's actually 81 so I'm really glad now that I checked. So I've measured that up just on one side of the door, and I'm going to start with the first handle. And then I've got a couple of clamps there because sometimes these handles don't sit exactly flush with the door. They can sort of sit, sit forward a little bit either at the top or bottom. So I'm actually going to clamp them into place to help them dry into place. And where the little dot is is where the sort of round part of my handle goes. I'm trying not to block the camera there. So that will go there and then that sits centrally in that bit. So I would have noticed that I'd got the measurement wrong at some point, but it is always best to check. I'm going to pop that there. And then see how it's sort of sitting up towards the bottom. You might not be able to see it actually on camera. Yeah, so it, it, it's sort of moving slightly. So I'm going to clamp that into place first. And I've got these big strong clamps here really hold that down, just making sure it's straight on there. I'll let that one dry first and then when that's done I turn over and use this as the marker for where to put the second one. Right, so I'll pop that to one side and now I can get back to my little unit. So I've given the table a sand and I'm really happy with that and you'll normally find after you've applied a coat of paint that your draw is going to be a little bit tight so I've done quite a bit of sanding on this to get it to go back in and it is still rather tight but as I always say just sand a little bit away at a time so that you don't end up with too much gap in. I've probably sanded a little bit too much off that side now, but I'm okay with that. It's not, it doesn't look too out of place. There's a slight gap down the other side as well. So I'm pleased with that. And also, I always sort of paint just a little layer around the inside of the drawer opening, just so that when the drawer is in place, you can't see any of the natural wood. But if you do that, make sure you sand in there as well. Otherwise, you might find that you've got some sort of, um, you know, little lumps of paint in there that will also stop the drawer from going back in. So always check that bit first. So now I've done that, I can attach the table top. So I'm going to go and wash this sanding dust off my hands and then we'll get that glued into place. Okay, so I've got the top in place and I've just put a bit of masking tape right across the top and I'm just going to put a little bit across the back as well just to hold it down at the back there. And again, if it pulls up any of the paint or um, wood dye, then I'll just touch that in afterwards. And I want to give a little bit of wax. I'll we'll put a little bit of wax on the top as well. And then I'm just going to put my clamps along the front of the drawer opening there. We hold that all together nicely. And I really like the walnut with that colour paint. That's really nice. in there as well. So I'll leave that to dry now and I'll see if my handle's dry so I can put the other one on the main door. 
So that first handle hadn't yet completely dried, but was dry enough so that I could then turn it over and attach the second one. If you can see through there, so they're both on there and I'm clamping them both into place at the same time. So again, I'll leave that to dry. But I really want to get that door in so that I can then cut the um, surrounds. And I've got the surround um, strips here and this is the same that I use for the skirting and they look really nice as a door surround as well. I'm just thinking, I know I haven't left that much room. So that is 15 millimetres and I know on a couple of those doors I just sort of guessed um, the depth because I hadn't got the surrounds at the time so I guessed at 10 millimetres but what I'll do is then cut 5 millimetres off from this straight bit so that I've still got that nice pattern and that should be alright I'll still have a straight bit there to go on the outside bit and then this is on the inside near the, nearer to the door but we'll do all that once we've got the door into place so what I want to do now is have a look at framing that lovely painting that Matt did for me so here is the little painting that Matt did for me of me, him and Woody walking along the lane <laughs> and I've got here a piece of paper that is about the same thickness and this is a piece that I've had a practice on my sort of wonderful watercolour painting there <laughs> so I'm going to use that so I'm just going to put it at the corner so I've got a straight edge there and I'm going to put it sort of six millimetres in from each edge and that's how much bigger I want it to be and then I can put a little surround in there. So I'm going to draw around this, nice sharp pencil there, just really carefully draw around and then cut this hole out and then this will sit in there so that it makes it flat with the border. And then I should put another piece behind to sort of attach it all together and that's then I can stick my frame around that, that will be a big enough or thick enough to put my frame around. I'm going to cut this out with my craft knife. And what I'll do first is just do that um, six millimetre border all the way around. Actually it's seven there so good job I measured. scissors because that'll be easier. And then I'll use my knife to cut out the internal bit. So I've cut out a surround for the painting. So that will sit in there like that. And then I've cut a piece as big as the outside edges of the surround, which I'll glue both of those onto. And what I'm then doing there is creating a flat edge around the painting so that I can then add a border, which I'll do a millimetre thicker than this. So I know this is seven millimetres. And I went around as well and just made sure that all my edges were the same, so all seven millimetres. And then my surround, I'll do eight millimetres so that I've then got a millimetre to hang over the edge of the painting and cover that gap. And I'm just doing it like that rather than just adding a surround to the painting because I didn't want to lose any of the painting. So if you're sort of thinking, well, why am, I, why am I doing it like that? That's why, because I just want to cover up a tiny little slither around the edge of the painting. So if you have that sort of um, feeling as well, that you've got a really nice painting that you don't want to cover up, then do it this way and then I've just been into my drawer of craft paper to pick um, a surround and I was thinking in my mind this one but now I've actually put it near the painting it's it's far too yellowy and there's nothing really yellow in the painting um, that that will pick out and then I found this nice sort of yellow and grey or what I thought was cream and grey sort of marble effect which I thought might look nice but again that's a little bit too yellow so I've delved into one of Matt's sketchbooks and I've got this um, slightly textured paper and it's a lovely cream colour and I think that's going to look really nice and it sort of picks out that sort of creamy orange colour in the path. 
So I'm going to use that. So I'm just starting this bit again because I actually did it wrongly there. I just I just cut another piece like that stupidly so it just sat around again but I obviously want it to cover the edge of that painting as I just spoke about. So what you need to do is take your largest piece of card and just measure out that on your piece of paper that you want to use for the border. So let's lay that on there along the straight edge and I was going to cut around it but I'll draw around it first and I'll just cut just on the inside of that line and then I want to measure my 8mm border on the inside of that put that to one side just make sure that that's the same size as your backing board if not, you can make any adjustments, and I'm going to have to because I've just got a little bit more around the top and side there. Like that. And then I'm just going to move over here to a, a clean patch on my cutting mat. So I'm just coming over here onto a clean patch because I'm going to do my sort of pencil marks on the back of the surround so then turn it round and put it around the painting so that you can't see any pencil marks. So I just want to then come in from each edge by 8mm and then we'll cut that hole out again. Last time I drew around the size of the painting and then made an 8mm frame, so obviously it was just <laughs> wider by a millimetre but on the outside of the painting rather than on the inside. So that was a mistake I made there. So I'm just going to get this done and then I've actually got to pop to the shop for tea bags. And then when I come back we'll get a frame made. Uh, you know, the wooden frame part. Okay, let's cut this out. Oops, I was going to try to do it freehand then. And when you've been cutting paper with your blade, just make sure you put a new blade in before you go back to cutting your wood because it will blunt it you'll find that it will drag along the wood. Okay, so let's see how that looks now, with it all in place. Those pieces first. Painting in there. And then the surround. It does, doesn't it? Really sets it off. Right, so I'll go and get those tea bags and I'll see you in a bit. On the way back from the co op, we bumped into Woody and Jill, who were out on their first walk of the day, and I played with Woody for a bit. So I'm just going to use my um, Gorilla Wood glue to glue all of these pieces together. I'm just going to begin by covering this whole back part in glue. Like that. I'm going to lay the underneath surround on. Look at those edges like that. sure it's lined up and then I'm actually going to pop the painting into the middle there what I think I'll do is put a piece of kitchen towel on top of that and then just weigh that down just because it's trying to sort of curl up at the corners and then I can glue the final surround into place. 
So let me pop that over there, get a piece of kitchen towel. And then we just need a small book to sit on top of there. And I'll pop the glue on there as well to weigh it down. So my handles have now completely dried into place, so I'm ready to pin hinge the door and then I can go and get that glued into place in the doll's house. So I'm just going to start off with a couple of full size pins and I just want to clear those um, pin holes. So now I've painted the frame, they're sort of bunged up with paint a little bit. Just carefully push that through there like that. Same at the top. And I know this is the top because I've written on it. And I've also put a little arrow. I can't see the hole there. Saying um, which way faces out into the hall. So then I just want to cut a bit off of this pin. And with these I'm leaving the pin head. So I'm just going to cut, not quite half, maybe three quarters. Like that. Actually gone in with that, yeah. I'm just going to leave that out a little bit there and then do the one in the top. So they're both in there, and then I just want to test the door, make sure that it's opening and closing nicely. It's getting caught at that bottom one there, so I may need to do a little bit of sanding. So let me take that out again. So I'd gone in at a bit of a funny angle at the bottom there, that's why it wasn't opening fully. So I removed that pin and then I've just put the other end of the pin in, which is slightly thinner. I think it was because I was using the thicker part of the pin to keep the pin head at the bottom that it wasn't going in at the right angle. So that is now incorrectly and opens fully. And I need it to open fully like that because I want that door to be open into the bedroom so that we can see also out of the bedroom and into that landing area. So that's why it's a really good idea not to push those pins all the way in until you've tested it and you're happy that it open and opens and closes smoothly. And then you can push them all the way in. And now I'm going to go and glue this into place in the doll's house. So I'm just making sure that I've got the frame sitting right in the frame there. on the other side as well just really sort of pushing that into place it's quite a nice fit actually I just felt a cobweb as I pulled my hand out of the, the ceiling part here then I don't like the idea of spiders living in my doll's house oh I nearly knocked the camera over then as well okay so I'm happy with that I can't in very clearly so I'm just sort of doing it by feel yeah that feels good there right so I'm going to open the door carefully like that push open and then I just want to pull this frame against the side of the door oops something clicked then did that come apart it doesn't matter if it did, now that it's in the frame, I'd rather it didn't, but I think I might have just clicked that bottom join apart, or I might have just clicked it out of the gap. I can't get my head in that close to sort of see what's going on, but I, I can feel that that's in the right place. So I'm really pleased with that. And... I said I've I've sort of done a few of these tutorials now so you're probably sort of well aware of how to make the doors and fit the frames but as I said in that if you've see at the top here where I've sort of got a bit of gap in so you can see the light coming through there that doesn't matter because then we're putting that frame around or the the door surround around there so as long as your frame fits nicely in there 
and you can open and close your door. Ooh. It actually naturally goes out that way, but I actually want it opening into the bedroom. But doesn't that look good all closed off? really like that and that is a slightly different colour white but the difference there really isn't noticeable the skirting board is a little bit brighter I like it with the sun coming in there um, but yeah it doesn't it doesn't really sort of shout out at you yeah but what I was saying as long as you get the frame in there you can open and close your door don't worry about any of this around the outside edge you need your frame to be sitting flat in there so aligned with the walls otherwise you're going to have trouble when you come to actually fit the surrounds you won't have a flat surface for them to go on because if you remember they actually overlap the front of this surround and then onto the wall so that needs to be flush but any of these sort of gaps it really doesn't matter because it's all going to be covered so let's just pop round into the landing and have a look at it from that side so this is my flat side and we had a big discussion about this before where I was saying about doesn't matter if you have your flat side of the door um, on which side you have it. I'm just going to come down to the study so I can sort of demonstrate this better. So if you look in the study I've got a sort of dip on this side of the door and then round here it's flat against the frame. So it doesn't really matter which side you do that but I was talking about being uniform so having them all flat on these inner rooms. But then when I came to actually fit my double door leading into the dining room, I meant to have it flat this side, but I just stuck it in the wrong way round. And by the, by the time I realized it was too late to remove it, I was worried that if I tried to then take it out once the glue had started to grab, I'd just end up damaging the door, the frame. So I left it. So the dip just down here, is on this side and I know it really doesn't matter it was just a, a sort of personal thing I wanted to be consistent with all of the doors leading into these sort of middle entrance hallways but I made a mistake with that one but because it's the only double door it doesn't look out of place and then it, and then it's sort of flat on the inside there got the lovely bed in there looks nice with that white floor as well and then what was it I saw when I was walking past? Oh yes, um, I looked in here and I thought oh, I need to touch up that paint but I forgot I haven't yet put the surround on so that's why it looks so messy there. So I've got to do that as well but that will have to be another video now. I like the look of that bed with all of that white, white flooring as well. Um, yeah but anyway back to the job in hand so I'm really pleased with that. And it's going to look really nice once we've got the surround on. So I've got some loose paper and things there, but I'll just glue those down underneath. Don't try and pull it off now, as you might sort of tear up further than your surround will go. And then on this side, I've got, I have got a flap of paper here, which I might actually have to remove because it's overlapping the frame. So I might just get my scalpel and just really carefully um, cut that flap off and then obviously hide that with the, um, with the surround. Let's push that door open again. Oh, I like that. The light coming through. That's really nice. And we're going to have our little table here, picture over the top and some little bits on it. And even with that false wall back in, we'll still be able to get that light coming through from here, which is what I really like. Let's have a look through the window as well. I know that sounds sort of really sort of voyeuristic of me, but I really like looking through doll's house windows. Look the sort of reflection there. It doesn't look right because the bed's not in there, but we're going to be able to see right through as well, you see, into the landing, which is what I wanted. So we could even actually put a little picture on that wall, couldn't we? That you can see just through this window. I like sort of little secret hidden things like that. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually um, cut those surrounds for both sides and then we'll get those painted up and hopefully attached today. Well, not hopefully, I really want to attach them today because I want to get that little back area sort of almost completed. And I say almost just because 
I haven't ordered a little lamp yet and I'm not sure what um, sort of colour scheme ornament wise I'm going to be going in these rooms. When I dressed the radiator cover for the video um, or for the tutorial I, I did it in, in blue, so blue and white china, which looked really nice, but also with a sort of stoneware china. So I'm not sure what sort of decoration I'm going to be doing yet. Um, but we'll have a little play around, we'll just do a little display, which can, we can obviously then move, we won't stick anything into place. Before I head back into the craft room, I just wanted to pop the bed back into place and the bedside tables just because I wanted to be able to have that door wide open and have the bedside tables there. So that works really nicely and there's still enough room on this side to come through. So that's really nice. Okay, back into the craft room. So my picture has now dried nice and flat, so I'm going to get the surround on. So I'm just going to apply the glue to the back of the surround. That and then carefully attach the surround to the painting. We're going to need to flatten this down again. So just get your surround lined up with the sort of back back part. It looks so nice. It really does finish it off nicely. Overcut a little bit there, but I'm sort of pressing that down so that it can't be seen. So I'm just going to flatten that again to dry. Really like how that looks. And let's move that card out of the way. And I've got that bit of tissue again, so I'll pop that there, that on top, get that little book again. Pop that there, pop the glue on <laughs> and then I just want to go back now to our little um, table. So where I went off over lunch and left the clamps on, you can see where it's taken off some of the wood dye in the shape of the clamp heads there. So what I want to do is just give this a really gentle sand and then just apply a little bit more wood dye just to the top. Don't sort of try and get it on around the edges as you'll get it onto your um, paint. So I'm just going to use a 500 and just go around in small circular motions. And that's the thing with clamping. You want to um, leave them on obviously long enough for the glue to dry but probably don't go away and leave things overnight, especially not if you're using, using clamp over tapes because it's that that, you know, over masking tape because it's that that's going to um, make the marks because you're just really pressing the tape tightly onto the wood. Um, right, where's my brush? I'll give this a shake first. So I really do just want to do a light coat along the top there. And try not to be too flicky with your paintbrush as well because you'll sort of flick it onto the paint and it does actually dye the paint so you'd have to do a lot of sanding and then painting over to get rid of it. And then I've just put a little bit into the lid of the tin. And that is actually all it needs. I'm just um, smoothing out the brush strokes. And then I've got here a piece of tissue kitchen towel and I'm just going to dab down gently onto the top like that. And there, those marks are completely gone. And then whilst I was doing that I noticed that I've just taken off a little bit too much paint with my sanding at the side of the legs. So once that's dry I'm going to touch up the paint as well, just on the front part. And then that is a completed project. Okay, so whilst the surround on the picture is still drying into place, I want to apply some wood dye to my wood for the frame. And then when I come to mitre it and join it, I can just glue it straight together and stick it into place around the painting. So what I'm actually using for my frame is part of my skirting board. So if you can see, I've cut away that sort of rounded area and then the flat bit at the top there, put it the right way around. 
which gives me a thinner strip with a nice bit of shaping in it to use for the frame. Now you can actually buy frame moulding and it's actually got a little ridge underneath so that you can have it overlapping around your, your picture or your painting. In this case I'm just going to make a flat frame, so it's flat on the bottom there, and then just stick that into place around the outside edge of the cardboard. But what I want to do is apply the wood dye first and then like I say it's just easier to glue it together as you're mitering and cutting it to length. And of course you could just use flat uh, sheet wood to do this and just cut it to, I don't know, three or five millimetres wide or something like that, depending on the sort of look you want to go for. When you're applying the wood dye to your frame, make sure you get along the edges because they'll be visible once the frame is in place. And I also sanded this before applying the wood dye. OK, so I've just measured on each side of the door from the skirting board to the inside edge of the frame. And on this side, I have actually got the correct 15 millimetres, so the surround would fit perfectly there. But on that side, I've only got 13 millimetres. So I'm going to do them both 13 millimetres, which will leave me a little gap down there, which I'll be able to fill. But the only reason I'm doing them both at the um, narrower measurement is otherwise when I get to the top and I have to do my mitre, if you've got one piece that is thinner than the other, you're not going to get an exact mitre join. So take your two measurements and if they're different, then always go for the narrower one and you may have a bit of filling to do. But of course, the best thing to do, and which I'll do with the other rooms now, is to actually add the door surround before you fit the skirt in. So I've done it the wrong way around in here, really. Should have done all the doors first. And normally when you're sort of doing a doll's house or a kit, you would put the doors in first, but it's just obviously because I took them all out and then remade them. But if you have the option, then do do the doors first and the surrounds and then fit your skirt in around them rather than how I'm doing it. So on that side I'll go for the 13 millimetres at both sides and then round here I've not left enough room there so I've only got 12 and a half millimetres and that actually worked out the same on both sides. Oh we've all gone out of focus there. I get back into focus. <laughs> That was strange. I think it's because it's so dark in here. And I did actually just go and get my regular torch, but it just puts a circle of light and makes everything else a lot darker. So I do need to get some new batteries for that other light, so I'll do that. So yes, 12 and a half on this side, 13 on the bedroom side. So what I need to do now is get the height, and then we can get those pieces cut and fitted. So I think I'm going to need to put the camera down to get the height, so I'll do that and then I can get an, a more accurate measurement. So I've cut all of the door surrounds and I've dry fitted those and then I've just jotted on the back of each one which part of the room they're for, which side of the door. And now I'm going to paint them and I should have just enough of that cotton white paint left in there to do them, but if not I'm pretty sure I've got another tub of that. And I want to do a couple of coats on each of these. And I haven't gone into great detail because I covered all of the surround cutting um, and measuring and everything you'll need to know in that first door video that I did. So do refer back to that if you want a sort of more detailed description of how to do the doors and the surrounds. So that's a couple of wet coats done on the door surround pieces. I'm going to leave those to dry completely now and then I'll do a second couple of coats. And I've got more than enough left in my little pot to do that. So I'm going to cover that up again with a bit of cling film. And now I want to go back to our picture frame. So when I originally laid my frame alongside the painting, I thought it looked a little bit too wide and it was a lot wider as well than the top of the table. So I marked up on the back of the picture, so I went round the back in pencil and just trimmed three millimetres off from all the way around the frame. So that's now five millimetres deep and I think that looks a lot more sort of in scale and it fits nicely above the table now as well. 
So to make the frame, I'm going to start by doing a mitre angle at the top of the first piece of frame. And the frame is sort of flat and then comes out in a sort of round, half rounded bit there. So it's this flat bit that I want against the picture like that. So I want that to run against the frame and then the rounded part is on the outside edge all the way around. So I'm going to begin by cutting my mitre up like that. And I've got my old cutters here. So, so that you don't waste any of your frame, just go right into that far corner. Make sure it's straight along the edge of your mitre cutters. And cut that like that. You can then line the corner up with the very corner of your painting. And then make a little pencil mark at the bottom of the painting. And that's where the next mitre will start. And it will always be an opposite angle to the first angle that you made. So then you can pop that back in your cutters and cut that next mitre. Just lining that up with a little pencil mark you've made. It's a bit difficult to see when you're working with pencil on dark wood, but make sure you're in the right place and then cut that. So there's our first piece. And then you need to cut a mitre going in the opposite direction. So that piece is wrong now, so I need to cut it opposite. And again, go right into that corner so I'm not wasting anything. That will then fit nicely along that bottom edge there and against that mitre. And then you make your next little pencil mark. And again, do an opposite mitre. So that one will go there like that. And then you'll continue to work your way around. Then you need to cut the mitre in that piece. Like that, and then do your next line. When you come to measure for the final piece, move that side out of the way and then you can measure the same as usual. Line it up like that and do your little line. And then cut. And always think before you cut that you're doing it at the right angle. Just sort of stop and think about what you're doing because when you're doing mitres it's so easy to get it wrong. Check you've got a nice fit. And then you can actually just glue it all together around your frame. I think that looks really nice. I'm going to start along that edge. That's my cocktail stick. Let me get all these other bits out of the way as well. So I'm just going to start by applying a line of glue along the edge of the paint in there. I'm going to go all the way around and then work quite quickly. It just makes it easier. And if you apply glue onto both of those mitres, get it the right way around, glue that into place. Make sure you're not getting glue on your painting. And push it flat against your surface as well. And then you can apply glue to the other end of the top piece. Get that one in. I've got glue on there, haven't I? So I can just slot that final piece in. Give it a good press and sort of jiggle about if you need to. Push your painting right down to your work surface so that it's sitting flat within the frame. 
Don't worry about the excess glue at the moment because we can remove that. Give it a little shove, make sure it's not sticking to your work surface. And I just sort of like to squeeze down on those corners as well. And then take a clean cocktail stick and just be really careful when you're removing the excess glue so that you're not going to pull up any of the paper. Once the frame has dried, just apply some masking tape to the back. This will secure the frame and also hide any gaps around the edges or along the mitre joins. And there's my framed painting. I'm so pleased with that. I've also done a coat of paint on my table, so this is now complete, but I just want to put a little bit of clear wax on the top. And I'm going to be using this shoe polish, and it's all cracked, but that doesn't matter because you can just scoop a little bit up on your kitchen towel and then just rub it into the top. And it just gives it a really nice finish and a bit of a sheen. Just rub a little bit on like that. And then use small circular motions to rub it into the top. You can see I've just done that half there, but you can already see that it gives it a really nice sheen. So what I want to do now is a second coat on all of those door surround pieces. So as I came to apply the second coat to my door surrounds, I realised that the land inside should naturally be in the white, it should have been in the natural calico. So I've done the second coat natural calico and the white has actually made for quite a nice base coat there. So not too much of a problem, but I should have just been thinking about that instead of just rushing on like I normally do. So they've now all had two coats and once they're dry I can fit them into place. So whilst they're drying what I'm going to do is start editing this episode. So the little um, light that I normally use, the batteries have just gone. So I know it's a little bit dark in here so apologies for that but I'll try and lighten it up in editing. I really am just doing another coat along that back skirting. So I fitted both lots of door surrounds into place. So that's the back landing doorway there and I've got a little bit of filling to do um, in that bottom part there and I think it's because the wall behind isn't quite flat so it's tipping up so as much as I sort of push it towards the wall it's sort of angling over that way so I'm going to have to fill that. And then I found this little um, light that clips onto the top of the camera, a little ring light, and that's ideal for using in here. So until I get some more batteries for my other one. And then there's the bedroom door, and I'm really pleased with how that looks. I have got a tiny little bit of gap in in the right hand mitre join, which isn't really visible from the front, but I will put a bit of filler in there. And then I just want to apply a little bit of paint very carefully along this left hand edge of the door. So I just turn that light up. <laughs> um, just because I removed the glue and I think I might have pulled a little bit of the paint off. And again, I'm not sure if that's very clear on camera, but I will just touch up along that side of that door with the teal paint. Um, and that was it for filling on that side, that went in really nicely and they all fitted really nicely. All I had to do was actually sand the paint off from along the mitred edges on the top pieces on both sides. So when you're painting that's something to think about, don't get too much paint on those mitre joins as they won't go back together perfectly. And then as well if you want to have a door open, well to be able to open and close your doors make sure that your surrounds aren't overhanging the door opening. And I sort of kept checking that as I was pressing the pieces into place. Just keep making sure that it's still opening and you're not overlapping there. 
So I'm really, really pleased with that. That just sort of finishes that bedroom off. It was such a shame having that horrible big messy hole in the corner of the room. I've given it a good, um, say a vacuum clean, but I used my soft brush to get all the dust out of there. Just cannot wait to start adding more accessories in there. I've actually got that lovely little glass pink perfume bottle, or pink glass perfume bottle to go on the dressing table. And then I'll make a few little bits of makeup and things to go in there. But yeah, really pleased with that. So what I actually want to do now then is put the little table and the painting into place. But like I said, I haven't got all of the right um, sort of accessories yet. So I'm just going to do a display that I can obviously remove. And the painting, I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape to put it into place for now. Just because when I do get a lamp, I obviously want to position it so it's not too much hidden by the lamp. So I don't know what height I want it at yet. So we'll just lose, use a little bit of masking tape on the back of there as a temporary fix. But I'll go and get my accessories box out and see what I've got to dress that table with. Okay, so I've just found a few little bits here out of my accessories box. And this isn't going to be the sort of final display. But I've just really chosen some sort of natural colours that will look really nice up here. A little um, picture frame there that I made, that's Matt and I. That might be a bit big, but I'll just pop that there towards the back. I've got some little flowers. I've chosen some orange flowers there to pick out the colours. Um, in the painting like that and then I've just got a little um, stack of little notebooks here which always look quite nice for decoration I'll just pop those at the front over the edge of tables like that and then let's bring in the painting and I've just put a couple of pieces of masking tape on the back of here just in loops which obviously I can then remove so I want that sitting centrally above the table <laughs> about there I think just pop the table over a little tiny bit like that yeah I like that so I'm just going to pop the false wall back in and just finally I want to take a look through the door I've left a little light out there and that was sort of my plan in having maybe a little LED light that I could just sort of reach in and stand out in the hallway I really like the light that that casts there and then if we just scoop over into the bedroom and have a look through that open door that looks really nice so really pleased with everything we've got done in these last couple of episodes Okay, so that's it for today's episode and I really hope you've enjoyed these last couple of episodes. I'm really pleased with how that little back landing area is looking and the guest bedroom as well now that it's got the door. Now don't forget if you would like a t-shirt like this or a mug then do get in touch for prices and delivery prices. And please do pop over and take a look at my Patreon channel and if you're able to support me over there I would really appreciate it because it means I can keep making videos. Okay so I'm going to let you go now and I'll be back as soon as I can with a new tutorial. So until then take care. Bye!